next talk up, um, Anders Hammerkist is going to be telling you about using meta classes to make a declarative GUI. Um, and then it's time for lunch. There will be questions at the end. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as you said, I will be talking about using meta classes for making a declarative. Oh. It's been sitting here for too long. There we are. Uh, making a de uh, declarative GUI implementation. I will also be telling you about uh, meta classes. It's, it's a sort of an inspirational talk to, for you to use meta classes on your own. Uh, the work uh, on the background that, that inspired me to do this talk, uh, I did together with, with my colleagues Henrik Bora and uh, Mikael Schoenenberg. Um, First, a bit about me. Uh, I motivate my five-star Python rating by b having been at it since, since Python 1.4. Uh, I've been working at OpenEnd since 2001, and I've been consulting at Autolabel, where we did this work since 2014. And I do all kinds of stuff, because we're small companies, so I get to do everything. But uh, to start with, um, does everyone know what a meta class is? Okay, about half of you. Uh, I can tell you that you've all used them. If you've used the class uh, keyword, you've used the built-in meta class type. Uh, the uh, The other things we will be talking about is, is uh, a bit, we'll be seeing about a bit of uh, GTK, uh, which is the uh, GUI, GUI library we, we used. And of course, I need to tell you why we all did this. And this is, uh, Autolabel makes these cool labeling printers. Um, you have the printer with printing out a label and it has an arm that sticks it onto the box. And they've been, it's time to revise the software and, and the software running, you see the display here. That's, that's all Python uh, in GTK interface. The one that's on this, in this picture is running Python 2.5 and GTK 2. <laughs> and we're upgrading it to 2.7 and GTK 3. <laughs> and this is what the new user interface will look like when, once it's done. Uh, so we wanted a, a, a nice way of expressing the, the layout. Um, Yes, as I said, we started, we, the, the legacy application is running Python 2, or, well, both of them are running Python 2, and we had GTK 2. We decided in this process to upgrade to GTK 3, uh, mostly using the comp compatibility layer, um, but trying to move on to, to the proper GTK 3. But this is, this is sort of the syntax that I dreamed up. This is where we wanted to go with the layout. If I quickly go back to the, you see the hierarchical, you have the uh, sort of major groups on the left, and as you go across, you go deeper and deeper in the type hierarchy. Uh, which is, I mean, that's, that's how GUIs are built. You start with the window, and then you have the dividing up the window in different parts and you have different widgets in there. So this, uh, I have some, some code that you can download and play with. And the code on the left will actually produce the, uh, the little window you see up on the right. And just for comparison, this is what it would look like in, in, in the standard GTK3 syntax. And I had to take out all the, all the white space to make the code fit on the slide. <laughs> but for the first part, I will teach you about meta classes. And as I'm sure you've heard many times, meta classes is all wizard level stuff. 
So wait, once the talk is done, you'll all be wizards. So, um, the meta class, that's the class of the class. Uh, as I said, the built in meta class that every class in Python uses is type. And if you want to use your own meta class, in Python 2, you, you use Dunder meta class. In Python 3, you added meta class as a keyword argument on bar. The code examples are, are Python 2. I will try to mention the how, how to do it in Python 3 when there's a difference. Uh, the example code that, that you can download, if you run it through Py 2.2 to 3, it will, it will run fine on Python 3. There's a bit clearer illustration of, of, of this, what the meta class is. You, everyone knows what an instance is and what a class is, I hope. Yeah. So, the relationship between the meta class and the class is exactly the same as between the class and the instance. And that, of course, leads to questions, can you have meta meta classes? And yes, you can. I haven't figured out a reason why you would want to use a meta meta class on the meta class, but you can go on forever. <laughs> it's just, under, well, but if you specify a meta class in your meta class definition, it will work just, just as well. But as I said, I, have, I haven't been able to figure out a use case for it. But if you do, please tell me. <laughs> so, uh, the methods that you will actually be using if you, if you write your own meta class is the Dunder new, which is the constructor, you know, it will it returns the, the object that you're instantiating. Uh, you don't actually have to return an instance of the class you're, that, you're, that you're in. You can return whatever you want. If you return 42, instantiating the class will give you the, the integer 42. It will try not to do that. It can be very confusing. <laughs> uh, Dunder init, of course, once you have your Meta class instantiated, that is, once you have your actual class object, uh, your Dunder init will be called and, and you can do stuff there. Uh, in Python 3, there is, a use, there is a method that would have been useful for us in, in implementing this, this Dunder prepare, prepare, which is called before the class declaration is pa parsed to uh, return the, the dict-like object that will use, be used to populate the namespace. So if you don't want to use a standard Python dict, in Python 3 you can, you can dream up any, any, any dict-like object. So even, for instance, if you, if you need ordering, which we need, you could uh, return an order dict from the uh, Dunder prepare. Then um, also, the difference here with Python 3 is that you see the KW args on the, on the Dunder prepare. The, you have the keyword arguments for, for new and into also, and they come from the uh, class uh, inheritance list. If you, if you add keyword arguments there, they will get passed into these, to the constructor methods, which can be useful in, in some cases if you need to customize your, your meta class. Right, so if you add other methods on your, on your meta class, which you may want to do because you don't want to have 300 lines of new, <laughs> uh, those methods will be visible on the class, but not on the, on the instances of the class, which it's good to know because you'll be less confused about why this? Why? Why can I do call the foo method on 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 the class, but not on the instance? What? How? Where did it go? Ah, it was on the meta class. <laughs> right. Um, so one th thing I wanted to 
sort of take back from this about the meta clauses. The, the clause declaration syntax in Python you see on top, it's really only syntactic sugar for instantiating the meta class. So the top code and the bottom code, the result, the foo clause, it's exactly the same. Once you've run the code, you cannot tell the difference between, between these two. Um, so try to remember that, that you can use the class declaration syntax to uh, instantiate, a, instantiate a class, essentially, uh, the meta class, that is. And that gives you lots of power to, to, to use the class syntax for things that, well, there's classes, but not really the standard Python classes, which is what I've been, uh, yeah, which is, which is sort of the idea that I used to, to uh, dream up this uh, GUI declar declaration syntax. And just for comparison again, uh, just to, not all of it, but to, the top is, is the declarative syntax that we will look at how we did, and the bottom is the what it would look like if we hadn't. Uh, and I just have a little pause here to see if, if you're following along. Yeah. Are there any questions on the on the what a meta class is? And should, or should we continue to look at the code? So right, uh, as I said, the one, the first problem we ran into was that in a standard class, you just get the dict with with all the attributes in some random order, and when you're declaring a GUI, you obviously you want the you want to be sure that whatever you put on top, the first spot in in your window, it shouldn't randomly appear that somewhere in the middle. You want the order well defined, so. And since we were using Python 2, we couldn't use the Dunder prepare. Um, so the, this was really the, 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 I'd say it was the hardest bit of, of making this work, figuring out how to do this. Not that it was very hard, but then I'm a, I've been at this for a bit, so I, I, sh I might not be the one who should be judging how hard it was. Um, What, what I did was that as long as uh, the contained or the, the attributes in the, in the class were also instances of our meta class, I would be able to, to sort of detect when they were created. Um, and this, for our application, since everything was going to be a, a, a GTK widget, this, this was no problem. Everything was going to be uh, instances of our, our meta class. Uh, so whenever you had the class on the, on the, in, on the inside, I would, well, I, I should actually back up a bit to, to, to this slide. Um, the way, if you look at the, at the top half, the way that Meta clauses get instantiated is that it it will instantiate from the from the inside out because label is going to be an attribute in the group clause, so the label will have to be created first in order to be able to be placed in the namespace of group and so on uh, up to the top. So therefore, um, when I'll go back to that slide, it's easy. Uh, when label is, is created, I will remember that, ah, now label was created. And then when we get to group, okay, let's see, what, what has been created recently? And I'll go through the list of, of, of the recently created uh, clauses and, and, it, and, the, and the order they were created in. And I say, ah, label was created recently. Is label in my, in my namespace? Yes, it is. Okay, so that one must have been first. Yes. Um, 
And then I, of course, once, once I found them, I will remove them from this list. And it will waste, the, waste a little space. Well, not really, because you will be keeping the classes around anyway, but it, you'll have the list of, of a few of the top level classes still, still remaining, because there is no meta class for the, for the module, basically, to, to clean, clean up this list. But that's small enough that it doesn't matter. Uh, and I'll take this opportunity to, to have my first uh, GTK quirk that I ran into also, and that was that uh, the G object also has a meta class. And it took it, I didn't realize this at first, and I was like, really confused. And why can I not inherit the GTK widgets in, in, in my widgets? And it turns out it was because the, the uh, G object also had a meta class, and they were colliding. Uh, but once I inherited it, the, the G object meta, meta class, as in, as you know, uh, type is, it's, type is both a, it's, it's a bit of ma a magic built in because if you, if you, you just use type uh, as is, it's the base meta class. But if you call it with, with an object, it will return the, its class. And since G object is already a class, it will be the meta class. So yes, this is the, the this is our, our our meta class for our our base widgets. Uh, and you see here when when uh, actually I think I missed the code where I actually add or maybe that's on the next slide. Well, we'll see. Um, so here anyway, these this uh, attributes. Uh, class attribute, or meta class attribute, it would be in this case, that will be populated with, with the list of, of classes as they're instantiated. And then I will go through it and look for yeah, whatever is in my namespace appended to my local list of ordered attributes and, and then remove them. And, and as I'm sure most of you know, you cannot remove stuff from a list while you're iterating over it in a for loop, because then you will miss stuff. Namespace is the dict that is uh, cre created. Hmm, let's see. If we have a good, yeah. For instance, if you look at the top, the, the namespace is the dict that is is created from from the attributes in the, in the class declaration. So, in in the case of top here, namespace will have title, hello world, and it will have group, which will be the the instance of the group class. So I look through there for, for, for instances of, of, well, classes, really, instances of the meta class. It's a bit confusing with the meta class because you have meta class instances, which are classes. So the terminology gets a bit confusing. Right, and then at the end, I will, of course, instantiate calling the, the, the super class. Uh, Dunder new, which will instantiate the, the, the actual class. I realize here I forgot to, this code is actually wrong. I, the, the, on the slide, the code that is downloadable is slightly different, so that one is right. This should be a, a, a the, the return from the, from the Dunder new I should, of course, have saved in some place because that's the actual class that needs to be passed on up. Yeah, so well, you've seen this a couple of times, but using that, that meta class you just saw, assuming that you actually return the, the, the uh, result from the super Dunder new, uh, this code will, will get you a, a, a attributes ordered attrib uh, attribute on the top class, which will be the ordered list of the inside classes. So that's our, now we solved our first problem. Now we can actually order stuff in, in our classes. The next one is, is uh, 
we wanted to do, of course, we wanted to be able to set properties on the, on the GTK widgets and also on, on, our, on our, own, our own complex widgets. We have special widgets that deal with settings and they know all kinds of magic stuff. Uh, so in the case of window, title there should obviously set the title of the window. And in GTK, the title of the window is a property, uh, which is not a standard Python property, but it's a little bit different than, and uh, so I need to add some code to set it in the proper way. And also I wanted to be able to, if our code has a, has a standard Python property, I wanted to be able to set that property uh, in the declaration. Uh, so for instance, normally if, you, if foo widget has a property, uh, foo, setting foo in a, in a subclass like this would overwrite the property and you would, you would lose whatever setter and getter methods, methods you had and just have a standard 42 in, in the uh, class dictionary. But with some magic, you can make this syntax instead call the setter. One way I thought about maybe use, doing this was to use a setter on the meta class because then maybe it, it, it would be called when, once you set the, the, the 42 and, and you could do stuff in the, in the meta class. In, in the property on the meta class, but it turns out that the, the namespace, the initial namespace doesn't bother about uh, calling, uh, doesn't bother about looking for properties. Or, or, uh, so that didn't work. But. So basically what, what I do is, is I put a, a, uh, an attribute on the, uh, on the class under defaults, uh, which I will populate with, with any, first in, in the meta class when you, when you write your, this is when you have your, 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 um, your the base class, in, in this example, when you uh, create your foo, foo widget class, uh, it will look through your attributes and see are any of these attributes uh, properties either in the in the case of the uh, python property it will look for a dunder set uh, on the attribute so if 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 foo in, in that case had, had been a, a, a uh, a property, the property will have a dunder set to, to uh, that would get called when you, whenever you change the, the attribute. Uh, properties are, uh, are a subject enough for another, uh, <coughs> for an entire other talk, <laughs> because they're really useful too, but I shouldn't get into them too much here. And in the case of the GTK properties, there is a props attribute on the GTK class. So I look for is the, if, is the, if the attribute you're trying to set is if it's in that one. Um, and if it is, I will, I will take the attribute you're trying to set and, and move it to this Dunder defaults dictionary. Uh, yes. And then the cooperation from, from the base with it. Yeah, this is a normal class. This is not the meta class. Uh, when, when you instantiate that, I look through this Dunder defaults, which is in the class. And, and if there's anything in there, I will set that or that. And since I remove the attribute from, from the class, it will now call the, um, the property setter method. A little bit roundabout way, but it works quite nicely. Uh, 
And of course, if, it's, if it was a, a, a GTK property, it, I will call the uh, set adder on the, on the props uh, attribute instead. Right. Um, I should mention the, the Dunder MRO. How many of you know what, what Dunder MRO is? Okay, it's about half. Uh, I want to mention it because I used it, obviously. It's a, the, order, the order that you should look through your base classes uh, when you're looking for an attribute or a, or a method. Um, so, for instance, here I, I put up the, the, uh, the Dunder MRO of, of strings, just as an example. Uh, so you're supposed to start with the first one and go through them, and once you come to the class where that, that has the method you're looking for, you should call that. And normally you do that using super if you are involved in all, at all. Usually if you, if you just say uh, foo.bar, Python will look for bar for you. But in this case I needed to sort of look through them myself, and it turned out in all my use cases, it, it was much easier to just overwrite what I found than it was to, to look and see, ah, is it here, no, is it here, no, is it here? So I did, I walked it in, in, I walked it in the reverse and just made sure the, the, the top one won in the end. And there's a really, wouldn't say complicated, but it's a really long description of, of how the MRO is calculated on, on at this uh, URL at the bottom, if you're interested. <laughs> right. And uh, then, of course, the next, next order of business is instantiating the widgets. You get your actual window and all the actual widgets inside your window. Um, if you just do nothing special, instantiating top will get you a top, and it will have attributes in it, say top.group, but that will still be the, the class group, which is not the, the actual VBox that you want. Um, the simple way to do this is, of course, in the base class, when you instantiate top, have it in turn go through its its attributes and instantiate whatever is there, uh, and it, I mean, and then of course it needs to, since it's GTK, G, <coughs> since it's widgets, it, it obviously needs to put them somewhere also. But the base class can't know where to put them, so that that each individual widget will have to figure out where to put them. And so that code like looks like this. And again, I have I'm working backwards through the MRO to 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 find all the widgets, uh, because I don't actually know if I needed to do this, but I wanted to, to instantiate them in the same order that, uh, that they were listed. And then I replaced the, the or well, I set the attributes ordered list on the class with the instantiated uh, attributes instead of the, instead of the classes because I felt that, well, if I needed the classes, I could go through the class and made stuff look a little bit nicer and I didn't have to invent new names. And then for the last order of business, we have mix-ins. Uh, we wanted to do mix-ins. Uh, GTK doesn't allow multiple inheritance. And I hope you can see the problem here. Uh, Python doesn't know that GTK doesn't allow mix-ins, so it will happily let you try. Things break in strange and mysterious ways sometimes. Uh, but it turns out that you can, if you do nasty things with the GTK meta class, you can sort of sort of work around the fact that you can't subclass G GTK classes. Uh, I 
just sh show you the code. So uh, basically, if, if we find if in the in the MIDI class, if we find that we have more than one base class, ah, this is multiple inheritance. We may have to do something. The Dunder G type is set on on all G object classes. So if you have a, a Dunder G type, you know this is a this is a GTK class. I'm okay. I'm getting to dangerous territories here. Uh, and if I do, it turns out that I want to put a, an extra layer in between. I don't know why this works, but it, it helps for cert certain certain bugs or well features, I guess, in in, in GTK. Uh, so I quickly invent one more level of, of class hierarchy, hierarchy to, to sort of bring in all the all this all my base classes into one and then I can add my stuff to to, to look through here and, and find stuff and put it all into to my namespace and eventually instantiate mine it I don't know why it works but it does <laughs> yes um. Finally, we're at the end. <laughs> so, I hope you've learned a bit more about what meta clauses are and what they can be used for. Um, it is obviously how, how your class object is instantiated. You can go and customize it and do weird shit. Uh, and I also hope you've been inspired a bit to, to try and uh, abuse Python into doing what you want and giving you a nice syntax for uh, for your problems and not 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 everything that you have is is beautiful code but hopefully you can make it a little bit more beautiful uh, i have code for you to play with it's it's a little bit bigger than than what i've shown here it it will run on on Python 2 as it is. If you pass it through Py 2 to 3, it will run on Python 3. I have tested both versions, so it, it should work. Uh, famous last words, you know. But there you go. You're hopefully now all wizards. <laughs> and now it's... I should just put up the, the, the URL for where you find the, the code. <laughs> Hi. So first of all, uh, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, it's, I think it's the first talk about meta classes, so kudos to that. Uh, well, it's actually my second talk about meta classes, no, but not I mean this year. At, at, the, at the conference. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I think we all agree that uh, meta classes are one of the best features in Python, uh, and um, so I had a bit of a problem uh, with meta classes because. Um, in some design patterns, um, you would want to use multiple meta classes for one class. Mm -hmm. And the magic method uh, underscore underscore meta class takes only one argument. And the solution for this is a bit um, cumbersome. Namely, you have to create um, an abstract class from, uh, that takes mixins as meta classes and um, throw then that into your uh, class. And I was wondering if you have like a better solution. No, uh, not really. <laughs> okay. um, I suppose that for some things in, in Python 3 you could use the keyword arguments, but I'm not sure. It, it, it depends a bit. But for Python 2, no. <laughs> All right, next question. Anyone else? Brilliant. Hey, aren't you afraid if a new developer comes to your team and he has like two stars or three stars on his badge, he won't be able to follow uh, what you've been written? Actually not. Because once, once you look at, look at it, it's, it's, I mean, yes, you have to grasp that you have one more level of, of class instantiation. But once you pass that, it's not really that difficult. I mean... I don't, how, have you have you ever written a meta class? Well, 
Well, the only uh, place I actually uh, actively use them is in Django, but that's a bit different story, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you take a look at the example code I have here, so you can hopefully see that it's, it's, not, so, it's not so much magic. I think mostly is lacking is, is, is telling people or, and docu documenting how to, how to use them, not so much the, the uh, difficulty. But as, it is, as, as, as always, I mean, good documentation makes hard problems simple. So. <laughs> Hi, thanks for this presentation. I was not aware of meta classes and I tried to solve sort of the same problem with GUIs in Python that you did without meta classes and it looks quite ugly. Um, I was just wondering, when you lint your code, do you get any problems with having so many nested classes? No, no, I mean, there is one, uh, one small problem with having the nested classes and that is that it's hard to find uh, well, when you're, when you're in one of the nested classes, it, you cannot easily get uh, the, the, well, if you're, uh, if, if you're in the it, Dunder new or Dunder min, uh, init method of one of the nested classes, it's hard to, to find its actual uh, class instance. Um, so, because the the class outside of it hasn't been completely initialized yet, but that's the only problem with with the, with the nested classes. Uh, I should, I, I can do this uh, just to make it a bit clearer what I'm talking about here. Uh, when you when you're in in, in the Dunder title, uh, uh, sorry, the the Dunder init of title group and top don't exist yet. So you can't say top.group.title if you need to call, for instance, super. Uh, but other than that, it's no problem. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to say that I think you should retitle your talk to I never met a class I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Harry. Uh, thank you. So, hey, uh, um, it looks like what you've done is taken um, GTK objects, which are pretty horrible to use and initialize, and you've made uh, a much nicer API declarative syntax for writing it. So I guess yeah. if I was starting to write GTK GUI code, um, I would rather use your system than the default one. So um, have you thought about open sourcing your package and making a sort of a GTK zero um, and uh, contributing that back and yeah. making the world better? I, I have. Uh, what what we're using right now is is a bit too deep in our our system with all kinds of strange stuff which doesn't really apply to a, a generic system. Uh, I hope that the code that I'm uh, I've, I've put up here uh, can grow into something like that. Uh, I will happy to. I'd be happy to try and and, and sort of help that effort along. And the code here is, of course, open source. One more question. Uh, is it hard to unit test the code you write like this? No. No, you have... Uh, we, have we have unit tests for pretty much everything, so it's, right. not, it's not. And there is unit tests with the example for the, for the implementation, too, so... All right, is that us done? Brilliant. Thank you very much.